um, I just want to talk about proof of funds to study in Canada. There is something I want to explain here so that we all understand. And after I talk about that, I'm going to talk about some updates about Canadian colleges. First, let's begin with the proof of funds. Proof of funds to study in Canada is a very tricky process. I have always said this. You can have 50 million in your account and you still don't get the visa. First, for you to get a visa, you need to document adequately with documents that your proof of funds is okay. You need to show that your letter of explanation is okay. And you need to show that you have home ties to return after your study program. Of course, they know that you are not going to come back, but you need to convince them enough to show that you will return. Don't forget, I have always said, program choice is also very important for you to take note. Now, let's break this down. For you to study in Canada, these are the people I recommend. You may have your other people, but you should be your sponsor. Your father should be your sponsor. Your brother should be your sponsor. Your sister should be your sponsor. Your mother should be your sponsor. To an extent, your uncle or auntie should be your sponsor. Remember, all these people I mentioned, you have to show documents to show that you are actually saying the truth. Now, let's take a look at the documents you can show. If you are the one sponsoring yourself, how are you getting your money? Do you own a business or you work? If you own a business, bring out all the business registration documents. If possible, pictures. Now, if you are working, bring out your pay slips and also your employment contracts. If possible, pictures. Or if you have badge, a badge to show that you actually work with a particular company or anything to show that you work with a company, bring out these documents. This is for you. If your father or mother is doing the sponsorship for you, excellent, same thing. If your brother or sister is doing the same thing for you, excellent, same thing I mentioned. They have to bring those documents as well. And remember, for your father, your brother or mother or sister or whosoever, a part of yourself now, you have to get their birth certificate to prove that they are actually your parents or brothers or sisters or siblings, right? We are done with that. Let's assume that they don't work, they own farmlands and they are generating money from these farm lands, right? You can bring the documents of the farm to explain to the visa officer that they are harvesting things from this farm land. And if possible, why not show evidence with pictures? And these are, this is where they are getting the money from. They equally make profit from selling the products from this farm land. And they are gifting me maybe 18 million, 20 million in my bank account and make sure the transaction they can be able to trace and see that money in that account okay that way it is going to speak a lot and then they can now write a sponsorship letter after giving you the gift deed letter they should write a sponsorship letter stating that they are the one who are going to be taking charge of your academics while you study in canada and this is how they got their money if it's coming from your auntie or maybe uncle, make sure your auntie or uncle has the same surname with your parents and you back it up with birth certificate. So from your auntie, if they are the same, uh, maybe if your auntie is your, your mother's sister, of course, they are going to see it. They have the same parents. They will see it. Then now the linkage is going to be on your own birth certificate. The transition has to be clear. Now, they have to explain how they are getting their money and a whole lot of other things I mentioned before. This is how you document proof of funds to study in Canada. Well, you may get uh, companies to sponsor you. You may get other organizations to sponsor you. Like a friend who is moving to Canada, he got a loan from his church. His loan, his church gave him a loan. Uh, let me say a loan. You understand to go and study. You get, but it's not about this. You have to show them evidence right now another option you can equally sponsor yourself in case these people sold a piece of land or something they should just drop the money in your account transferring let me put this here clear telling these people let them transfer the money into your account is very important and will easily give you the visa in case they leave this money in their own account this is the case i'm just bringing out this point because i want to talk about those who are in the US, who are in Canada, and they want to sponsor their brothers or sisters or siblings. If you have the money, transfer the money to their bank account. So let them do this. Uh, then you also do what is called the gift deed letter. And you also write a sponsorship letter and attach all your legal papers. If you are legal in that country and your job description and everything, you transferring the money in their account will tell the visa officer you are serious. But if you leave the money in your account and you tell them you are the one sponsoring them, they will understand that 
this person can enter the country and you leave them alone. Especially if you are the brother and not the parent. So you have to be tactical. Even if you want to leave the money in your account, at least let them have at least $15,000 or $10,000 of their consumption money in their account. Let them have an account and you transfer some of the money inside. Because I got a lot of people who come to me for appointments, for true appointments, they are like Milton. I got my sister, the money was rejected. But again, create an account is better. I will prefer you transfer that money. It's your brother, right? Excellent. It's your child, right? Excellent. You trust them, not so. That's why you want to sponsor them. Excellent. Transfer that money in their account. Tell the embassy you transfer the money to their account and let them be able to see that you are the one who transferred that money, right? You do a gift deed that you, you gave them the money. You just transfer it and you are giving them the entire money because you don't have anything to do with it again. You want to support them for their academics, right? And you, you write a sponsorship letter that this person, this person is related to me, is my brother or sister. We have birth certificate. Our parents' name is this, this. Our father's name is this, this. I will be taking charge of his studies. That's why I gifted him money. This is how you draft these things to convince them. Don't just say, no, I reside in the USA. Um, I want to sponsor my brother or sister. The, the visa officials knows all these things. These people are psychologists. You understand? So please, let's be true. At least you have to be truthful. This is the only way you are going to get this visa. You have to be truthful. This is all I can say for now. I think I will be bringing another video to explain to you why you shouldn't put lump sums, why you should show all evidence on how you are getting all your money. Even mobile money transfers can help you. Yes, petty petty, the money from your microfinance. If, let's assume that you are working and you own a bank account, but your company pays you using a microfinance. Now, you cannot go and maybe you are using the microfinance as proof of funds, right? You cannot use their bank statement because it's not an international bank. You are taking the money from the microfinance and you are saving in your bank account. Excellent. But show them that you are receiving salary from your company through the microfinance. They have to see receipts. And uh, Now, while you are taking the receipts, showing the money you, they, they, they paid you, you have to show your pay slips, right? Very important. Very, very important. They have to see all these transitions because now when they see this they believe more that at least you have shown them that you have this is how you are getting your money and this is the total in your bank account at least if you are saying that you have this you can sponsor yourself in canada with no stress this is the perfect way now we have talked about i'm going to be bringing another video later let's talk about updates a lot of people are telling asking me milton uh this school have not replied me this school have not replied me first guys I have said it times and again that admissions in Canada, especially community colleges, is so competitive and you will be treated on first come, first safe basis. They cannot skip somebody who came before you, who submitted his application before you and start treating your own. No. And remember, when these people get the, the, the number of people they need per that program, let's assume that they are needing, looking at 100 students for a particular program. As soon as they get the 100, every other person who is qualified is qualified but you are going to be on the wait list wait list means that if in case somebody doesn't pay the deposit they are asking the person within the duration sometimes 15 days 30 days they are going to then cancel that person the, the person is not serious they are going to take the offer and give it to you you understand and now this is going to affect you somehow for visa application before you go now and start applying for your visa maybe it's march already and ircc is going to take two months to process your visa, sometimes three months, four months. Let's assume that you are starting in September and you submitted March ending. They are going to take April, May, maybe June, July is still not here. Before you know, they reject you in August. Now your school is starting September. Is there a way you can reapply again, fix the problem and reapply again? There is no way because you will be late. Okay, let's assume you reapply again. Now they are still looking at people who were behind you. Before they will come back to you and look at your resubmitted application. You see, time is running. That's why I always say that submit your application early and relax. Don't submit to one school. Submit to many schools, multiple schools, two, three, and you relax. This way, if one doesn't give you, if the other one bounces you, you take the offer from the other one and you move on. There is no time. Because like I told you, it's like survival of the fittest, especially for those who want to enter Canada. Appointments is even, first of all, a problem. And for Canada, they will, like I told you, IRCC is 
Submit early. That's the only way to succeed. Submit early. Those who are applying to Nova Scotia Community College, um, I want to tell you that some people applied last time and never got offers, but they are qualified. So now, if you find yourself on the wait list, you have to wait. Like I explained to you, you have to wait. Colleges like NBCC, NSCC, Holland College, they are very competitive. You know why? One, they are found in Lalanti County. They are found in those provinces that are easy to get PR. Secondly, their tuition fee is quite affordable. Yes, 10,000. I think NBCC is not up to 10,500. Though there are programs that cost like $13,000, but still cheap. NSCC is 11,700. Though there are programs that cost like 13,000. Still cheap. Holland College, I think same thing. So you have to put this into consideration and rate your chances. Don't apply only to those places. Those of you who are going to Quebec, uh, I don't know how you are going to get PR because I don't know. In fact, if you are looking at permanent residency in Canada, go to other country, other provinces which are not like Quebec. Quebec, I don't know how the system works, but there are easy pathways you can... Like I said, these provinces with in the Atlantic Canada, Nova Scotia, Saskatchewan, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Islands, and a whole lot of them. And the rest, you understand? In fact, those places, Manitoba, they are easy to get PR. In Ontario, you can finish and before six months, you have not gotten your PR. Yes, I mean, because the transition is postgraduate work permit to PR, to citizenship after graduation. So if you joke with this, you are going to squander your chances. Please take a look at this. It is very important. Well, if you are looking for an affordable college or university in Europe, which is still accepting applications, then this video is a video for you to watch. And I would like to draw your attention to the fact that if you want to study in this particular university I'm talking about right now, then understand that your tuition fee is going to be 726.72 euros plus 22.70 euros for something else i think that should be for departmental or student union something but i didn't verify but know that in all you are required to pay 749.42 euros in case you make a decision to study in this school i want to give you the tuition fee so that you understand that the program is very cheap and i will be looking at my jota to explain a lot to you now like I said, I'm going to be talking about this school in Europe. The country in which this school is, is Austria. And you all know, or if you have not been watching my videos, I have a lot of videos I have uh, uh, dropped on this YouTube channel talking about studies in Austria, immigrating to Austria, and a whole lot of other things. And please, I want to tell you that Austria is very affordable. The only thing you need to prepare about Austria is the proof of funds because when you eventually gain admissions, you need money in your bank account to apply for the visa or let me say the D-type visa or the residence permit, whichever one we are dealing with. But now, before you apply for the visa, there is a school which is open and I'm going to be giving you things related to the application the required documents and the programs or every other detail okay so you might stay to the end of this video to watch for your own good thank you let's not waste time now if you want to apply for this program like i already told you the fees you need to understand that application deadline is november 15 to january 2nd 2024 november 15 2023 to january 2nd 2024 that is the deadline if you want to start studies by february march which is the summer intake in austria in this particular school now if you want to start studies uh let's say by if you want to start studies let's say by winter that is for the winter intake which is going to start october then you have to hold on because the date for you to apply for winter application or the deadlines has not been announced announced but that of summer which is the semester that begins march 2024 the deadline the date is between uh, november 15 2023 and january 2nd 2024 if you apply within this date then admissions period they are going to take admissions period from the 8th of january to 31st of march and they will take several weeks to look at the documents okay but if you meet the requirements they are going to take you to the program between january 8th and march 
31st 2024 for those who want to study in the summer semester now before i proceed to the other details of requirements and every other thing i want to tell you that the name of the school is called the university of vienna in uh, german it is pronounced as universita when when is w-i-e-n okay to end this video i just want to draw your attention to the fact that many schools in switzerland are going to open their portals very soon and i think admissions admissions to swiss universities is going to start january remember if you want to apply to switzerland you should remember that there are cantonal universities there are universities of applied sciences there are equally uh, teacher training universities and there are federal universities all these universities none of them goes above 1500 some are below 900 some 1250 and the others uh, uh 1300 800 some even just make sure you follow those videos check universities like university of lugano university of ben university of geneva ets zurich these are some of the schools you should be checking university of neuchatel university of freeburg there are a lot of them in switzerland check these schools and apply from january 2024 because their tuition is cheap now remember schools in austria will equally start uh next year as well and austria tuition is very cheap as well but before you apply to all these countries make sure you pay attention to one thing proof of funds proof of funds is very heavy in most of these countries so i'm just here to explain to you so that you understand what you are going to be doing at the end of the day then another thing you should remember is that the process of getting visa to malta has changed you are going to watch a full video on my youtube channel and again remember visas to lithuania now not visas anyway uh residence permits or permits to switzerland uh, to lithuania are gotten from uh, dubai lebanon or jordan so you are not going again to egypt for those who didn't know maybe from january next year things will change so i'm going to be updating you depending on what is available and again do not forget that proof of funds is very important there are very low tuition countries in europe but the issue is you need to show that you have money to study in these countries to study in these countries and i'm going to be explaining a lot of things to you guys i hope this helps you 